All right, so now we're going to talk about slant and other asymptotes. Um, more specifically, slant asymptotes, I'll just briefly talk about other asymptotes. Um, but those wouldn't be things we'd ask you to graph by hands because they get a lot more complicated to sketch in. Um, okay, so a slant asymptote occurs when the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the denominator. So in other words, if we were going to actually do polynomial division, x squared divided by x to the first is going to result in something x to the first. And so we're going to result in some sort of linear function, some sort of linear equation. And that's going to be the asymptote um, that our graph is going to kind of be bounded by. It's going to be some sort of slant asymptote one way or the other. Okay, so let's try this out. Um, here's our six steps again, just for reference. Simplify, look for holes, find our y-intercept, x-intercept, any vertical asymptote, in this case, any horizontal or other asymptote, and then pick some extra points and draw out our smooth curve. Okay, so let's try this. First of all, um, because this is a quantity in the bottom, there's not really much simplifying we can do there. Um, so I don't have to worry too much about the simplifying step. Um, next, find our y-intercept. We're going to plug in 0 for x. So for my y-intercept, we plug in 0 for x. So it gives me 0 squared over 0 minus 2, which is 0 over negative 2, or 0. So my y-intercept is 0, 0. So let's go through the origin. Okay, 0, 0. Next, my x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, I want to know when the numerator is equal to 0. Does x squared equal 0? And if we take the square roots, we get x equals plus or minus 0, which makes sense because it's crossing my x and y axis both at the origin. So we know, of course, there's not really a positive or negative 0. So my x-intercept is also 0, 0. Okay, next in my vertical asymptote. So that's what gives us division by 0. So what makes the denominator equal 0? And that's when x is equal to positive 2. Just add 2 to both sides there. Okay, so I have a vertical asymptote at positive 2. So I'll draw that in as best I can. Okay, there we go. x equals 2. All right. Uh, in this case, to find my horizontal asymptote, remember we're comparing the degree of the top and bottom. And because this is top heavy, when it's top heavy, it's a non horizontal asymptote. So, this is some sort of other asymptote. And to figure out what it is, we need to do polynomial long division. I mentioned this earlier uh, in one of my earlier videos. Okay, so we're actually going to do the polynomial long division. I'm going to have x squared plus 0x plus 0 and divide that by x minus 2. Okay, and I'm just putting in the x to the first and the constant as placeholders here. Just plugging in with zeros. So if we do our work, x squared divided by x is x. So this is the x squared divided by x equals x. Distribute our x, we get x squared minus 2x. And again, those placeholders help me have somewhere to line that up underneath. And remember, we subtract that whole quantity by adding the opposites. So those cancel out, I get positive 2x plus 0, just dropping this down. Um, next I would do 2x divided by x. So again, kind of doing the first term in each here, 2x divided by x, which is 2, so positive 2. And distributing 2 times x is 2x, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. We're going to subtract this quantity by adding the opposites. And those cancel, and I end up with a remainder of 4. Okay, And for our purposes, we actually don't care about the remainder. Okay, In this case, we just want the quotient. And in this case, I have a slant asymptote. And it's the equation y equals x plus 2. It's the equation of a line. And it's even in y equals mx plus b. So that's things that we're used to graphing. So my y-intercept is positive 2 for this line. And my slope is 1 over 1, up 1, right 1. 
So up one right one, up one right one, up one right one, etc. I don't want to mess this up. Okay, and down one left one, continuing that pattern. And so we have this slant asymptote, and that's probably as I'll try not to draw in the dashed line. We'll just use the points there to represent it. But there's my slant asymptote. Y equals X plus two. Um, so my graph might be curving in this area, bounded by these asymptotes, or it could be in this area. Or it could be in this one or this one. Generally, they're gonna be in opposite kind of diagonal parts. They usually are. Um, so we need to find some points here, test some X and Y values, figure out exactly where my graph is going. So this is the extra points. Okay, obviously I want to pick some values kind of close to two, maybe not super close in the corner because it may it may be way down here or something. So uh, let's see, let's put two in the middle. I know it's undefined. Um, I know when I plug in zero, I get zero back. I already had that point on there. Um, so maybe we will try one. So let's plug one in there. One squared is one. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So we end up with negative 1. So at 1, we're at negative 1. Okay. Um, I could try another one. Maybe not negative 1. Eh, actually, that shouldn't be too bad. Let's try negative 1. We'll get one more point in this section. Uh, negative 1 times itself twice is positive 1. And negative 1 minus 2 more is negative three, so I end up with negative one third. So at negative one, I'm at negative one third. And so I can kind of tell it's gonna go something like this, be bounded by that slant asymptote. Curve through here, this should be a smooth curve. And then be bounded by my vertical asymptote. Okay, so my guess is that on the other side, it's probably up here in this opposite region. Um, but let's test some points there. Let's plug in three, four, and five see what we get out of there. Okay, So start with 3. 3 squared is 9, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So I get 9 over 1, or 9. 3, 9 is on my graph. Let's try 4. 4 squared is 16, and 4 minus 2 is 2. So that ends up being 8, 16 over 2. So 4 is at 8. And our last one, 5. 5 squared is 25. 5 minus 2 is 3. Um, and that ends up being, what, 3 goes in there about 8 times with 1 left over. So 8 and a third. So 5, I'm at 8 and a third. And so this guy is bounded by these asymptotes going through those points with a smooth curve. Shoots off and gets closer and closer to that asymptote and shoots up and is bounded by our horizontal one. Uh, let's take a look at that actual graph. You can see we did a pretty good job. Um, and in fact, if I graph in the line, y equals x plus 2. x plus 2, we'll add, whoops. Uh, y equals, doesn't like me right now, x. Okay, let's just type it, x plus 2. No, nope, still doesn't like it. Windows not highlighted or something. There we go. And there you go. You can kind of see it's bounded by that line. It's getting closer and closer and closer to that line as it goes out. And we found that slant asymptote. Pretty cool. All right, here's our next example. Um, we're gonna do the same exact thing, hand sketch this. Um, so first thing I would try to do is simplify this. Let's see if this top is factorable. We've got a full quadratic trinomial. Um, See, are there factors of two that subtract to one? Yes, two and one, so it is factorable. So this tells me they're opposite signs, that's what that negative two tells me, x plus and x minus. The factors of two that subtract to one are two and one, and add up to the middle term negative one, the two is negative and the one is positive. And down below the x minus one, I just think of it as its own quantity, and unfortunately, nothing cancels out. So no holes this time, um, but that factoring might help us anyway. Okay, next we're gonna find our y-intercept. Okay, to find my y-intercept, we plug in zero for x. So 
I'm going to have 0 squared minus 0 minus 2 all over 0 minus 1, which gives me negative 2 over negative 1, or 2. So my y-intercept is the point 0, 2. Remember, we plugged in 0 for x. We get 2 back for y. Okay, there's a point on my graph. Oops, I knew if I didn't close this, it would change my brush size. Okay, let's do our x-intercept. Okay, to do that, we set the top equal to 0. And in fact, because we factored out the top, we can use the zero product property to find our zeros here. So when x plus 1 equals 0, we're going to get negative 1. And when x minus 2 equals 0, we're going to get positive 2. So we're going to have two um, x-intercepts, one at negative 1 and one at positive 2. Okay, so it's going to cross my x-intercept twice. Uh, let's see next, our vertical asymptote. That's when the denominator is equal to 0. So when does x minus 1 equal 0? That's when x equals positive 1. Okay, so I end up having a vertical asymptote at x equals positive 1. Okay. My horizontal asymptote, I compare the degree of the top and bottom, and once again I see this is top heavy by degree. So that means it's not a horizontal asymptote, it's a slant or other asymptote. But because our degree difference is only one, when I divide I will get a linear function. I'll get something x to the first. So that means it is a slant asymptote. It will be the equation of a line. Um, and you can have other asymptotes, like if, if this was x cubed divided by x to the first, and when I divide, I get something with x squared. You can get a quadratic as your other asymptote, like your graph curves closer and closer to that quadratic function as it goes out. It's kind of, it's kind of cool looking. Anyway, I want to ask you to hand sketch those. So for today's hand sketches, we're going to stick with slant asymptotes. Okay, so to find our other asymptote, we need to do our long division. So I have x squared minus x minus 2. Don't need any placeholders this time. And x minus 1. So we start with the largest term in each, x squared divided by x, which of course is just x, and distribute our x. x times x is x squared, x times negative 1 is negative 1x. We need to subtract that whole line by adding the opposites. So those cancel, these end up canceling, and I end up dropping down my negative 2. Um, and what ends up happening is I can't do my division anymore can't have negative 2 divided by x, um, this ends up just being a remainder. So my equation of my slant asymptote is just y equals x. So you can think of this in y equals mx plus b form where like my constant 0. Okay, so remember this is our slant asymptote, so I'd start at 0. And my slope, once again, is up 1 over 1. Got a couple nice, easy slopes to graph. Up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. Okay, something like that. And of course, down 1, left 1 as it curves this direction. Okay, so there's my slant or other asymptote. And I can kind of tell by my points I have here that it's going to curve between these two. So we're going to get this very wide looking graph. Uh, in fact, I probably don't need very many more points on this side. I could probably sketch this in, curving towards this asymptote closer and closer. Whoa, the pen got away from me there. Okay, curving through these, and then up towards my vertical asymptote, slowly getting closer and closer to each of those. Um, I've already got one point on this side, so maybe let's just plug in three. I don't think I'm going to need very many extra points here. So let's plug in an x value of 3 and figure out where my graph is. And in fact, I'm going to use the top one that's factored out. It's a little easier to plug into. 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 minus 2 is 1. And at the bottom, 3 minus 1 is 2. So 4 times 1 is 4. Divided by 2 is 2. So 3, 2 is on my graph. And again, I got a 
good amount of points to figure out how close it's coming into that corner, and I've got my asymptotes in there to know what it's bounded by. So my guess is it looks something like that. Let's take a look at the actual graph. I'll drag it over here in the window, and we can see we did a pretty good job. And in fact, I can hit tab, maybe. No, I just wants to mess with the label right now for no reason. All right, there we go. And plug in the line y equals x, and I can kind of drag it and see uh, it is bounded by that. Looks like it's getting closer and closer. And we can kind of see that vertical asymptote at x equals 1 that it's bounded by as well.